GameStop used to be the go-to place to get cheap used games over the last decade. GameStop used to pull in hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue every single year during its peak. But over the last couple of years, GameStop has had less and less traffic and sales. Last year, they actually lost over half a billion dollars. So what happened to GameStop and will they be able to recover? Make sure to stick around till the end to find out. Welcome to Hari Sobbies. GameStop actually started off as Babbage's, which is a Tucson, Arizona based software retailer founded in 1984. It was founded by James McCurry and Gary Cousin, who were actually Harvard Business School classmates. They decided to name the company after their famous inventor and mathematician, Charles Babbage's. They established their first store in Dallas' North Park Center with help from an early investor, Ross Parrott. The company was mainly focused on video game sales for the Atari 2600 which absolutely dominated the market at the time. They also started offering Nintendo games in 1987 and went public in 1988. By 1991, video game sales constituted for up to two thirds of Babbage's total sales. In 1994, they merged with Software Etc who was a Minnesota based retailer who specialized in personal computing software. Together, they form a Neostar Retail Group with Gary Cousin as president and James McCurry as chairman. But Gary Cousin soon resigned in February of 1995 to start his own cosmetics company. But soon the company fell into disaster as in September, they were not able to secure credit in order to buy enough inventory for the holiday season. As a result, they had no choice but to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Leonard Riju bid to buy the assets of Neostar for $58.5 million. He was the chairman and principal stockholder of Barnes & Noble Electronics Boutique. There was also another bid, but that bid was declined as Riggio's bid would keep open 108 more stores. But unfortunately, overall, 200 retail stores were forced to be closed. After purchasing Neostar, he dissolved most of the holding company and created a new holding company, Babbage's etc. Along with this, he appointed new leadership positions. In 1999, he launched the GameStop brand, which included 30 stores and strip malls. He also launched GameStop.com, where consumers would buy video games online. He also arranged for heavy promotion of GameStop.com in Babbage's and Software Etc. stores. In October of 1999, Barnes & Noble bought Babbage's Etc. for $215 million. Since Riggio was also principal shareholder and chairman of the company, they had to appoint a special committee in order to close the deal while avoiding bias. Barnes & Noble also ended up buying Funko, a Minnesota-based video game retailer for $160 million. They renamed all of these stores GameStop and also bought Game Informer, which was a video game magazine. GameStop went public in February of 2002, but Barnes & Noble retained majority control. They owned 67% of outstanding shares and 95% of voting shares. They retained control of GameStop until October of 2004. At this point, they distributed 59% of GameStop to stockholders of Barnes & Noble. This made GameStop an official independent company. And this initiated the golden years of GameStop as they went on an acquisition spree. They acquired EB Games in 2005 for $1.44 billion. This allowed them to expand their operations into Canada, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. In 2007, they acquired Rhino Video Games from Blockbuster for an undisclosed amount. This got them 70 more video game stores in southeastern United States. They also acquired free record shops Norwegian stores in April of 2008. This got them 49 more stores, which they converted into video game shops. At this point, they had a little bit of leadership restructuring. Daniel DeMatteo replaced Richard Fontaine as CEO, and Home Depot Vice President Paul Rains replaced Daniel's old position of COO in June of 2010. During this time period, GameStop's digital revenue would really grow as first party services weren't really that prominent at this time. In 2011, they got $100 million in revenue from this and in 2012, they got over $600 million in revenue from this service. They continued with their acquisitions by buying Congregates, Bond Labs, Impulse, Bimitronics, Simply Mac, Spring Mobile, 163 Radio Shack locations, and 507 AT&T store chains. At this point, they were doing really well in diversifying their revenue streams outside of just video game sales. And today, these assets are what can save GameStop.
but over the last couple of years, they have been on a decline as they have a dying business model. They have two major issues, the first of which is the rise of digital downloads and game streaming services. And these are first party services that are very reliable, so they are completely making physical copies of games almost obsolete. In the last quarter of 2018, 35% of GameStop's revenue came from physical copies of games being sold, so this is not good news for GameStop. And a decrease in revenue of physical copies of games being sold is not the only effect that digital games has had on GameStop. The rise of digital downloads has led to there being less physical copies being in circulation overall. As a result, this also throttles their used game sales as well. Into the last quarter of 2018, this accounted for 90% of the revenue, so this is also a major loss for GameStop. And the second major issue for GameStop is that most of their stores are located in malls. And all malls are facing trouble attracting foot traffic as Amazon is putting up tough competition. Even the biggest in-mall stores like Sears, JCPenney, and Macy's are having trouble, so it's no wonder that GameStop would also receive less traffic. Recently, GameStop has partnered with Amazon, offering Amazon Cash for used games. But this hasn't meaningfully improved their pre-owned sales. Right now, they have 5,800 brick and mortar stores with the dying business model, so it's very hard for them to turn around. And this is one of those unique scenarios where it's not completely the company's fault. Even if they were to emphasize more on their digital downloads, this really wouldn't help as there are first party services that people would no doubt prefer. And this has left GameStop in a really sticky situation. GameStop really put an effort to try to diversify their stores beyond video game sales. They started selling gaming accessories, headsets, pop culture collectibles, and comic books. They bought ThinkGeek in 2015 who was a pop culture products retailer. On top of all of this, they really emphasized on selling digital downloads. In the last quarter of 2018, each of these additions grew by double digit numbers. But the issue is that all of this combined is less than 20% of GameStop's revenue. Furthermore, long term growth is very unpredictable for these. Growth of accessories is heavily dependent on success of popular games. This is because most of the accessories are based on these games like Fortnite, which is actually on its last leg right now. And the problem with digital revenue is that it is easier to buy off of the first party website and directly download it onto your console instead of dealing with serial numbers and all of that hassle, especially when it's the same price in most cases. Plus, there's also competition from Amazon, Walmart, and Best Buy and so on in this division. As a result, GameStop would have to offer discounts and deals in order to attract customers onto their digital downloads. As a result, GameStop is having a lot of trouble trying to diversify themselves. But from GameStop's point of view, they have had several internal issues over the past couple of years. They haven't even had a permanent CEO for several years. Unfortunately, the old CEO died of cancer and the new CEO resigned in just 3 months for unknown personal reasons. Despite a lack of strong leadership, GameStop has made some good choices over the past couple of years. For example, they recently sold Spring Mobile which included 1,300 AT&T stores for $700 million. They can use all this cash to pay off their $471 million in long term debt that they have. And they can invest the rest of their money in their digital storefronts, making themselves unique and desirable in some sort of way. And with the appointment of a long-term CEO, they can have a much clearer view of the future such as a stronger emphasis on e-commerce platforms. Right now, they have a couple of options moving forward. They can reduce dividends and continue to sell off non-video game related businesses and invest all this money into their core business. Or they can do the exact opposite by closing all of their stores and investing all that money into more assets and becoming a holding company. But I think most of us would prefer that they take the first route. GameStop has been on a decline for the last couple of years, but they are not too far gone yet. With the right choices, they are definitely revivable and sustainable going into the future, and there is still hope. In the end, GameStop is a nostalgic company for many of us, but unfortunately, they have fallen into some trouble as the digital world is starting to take over. Fortunately, they have many liquefiable assets, and with a new leader and purpose, they can definitely turn things around. But will they use this opportunity wisely or fall to demise just like Blockbuster? Only time will tell.
But that's all I have for you guys on GameStop. Make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next. Also, if you guys like this video, make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hari, I'll see you guys on next time.